Greetings, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson and you're watching Get Your Sax Together. This is the second part of my series on functional harmony for complete beginners. In part one we covered some absolute rock bottom essentials and in this part we're going to delve more into chords and find out how you write them and how you find out what the notes are for each chord. So this is the second video in this four part series of Harmony for Complete Beginners. If you haven't already, be sure to check out part one, you'll find the card linked up there somewhere. That forms the basis for this video, it's the foundation course for this video, so make sure you check that one out. Please do go into the description down below and find the free PDF, which is linked down there. That's got all the information you need to help you with this lesson. Also, if you like the content, please do subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified of when new videos come out. Okay, I'm gonna jump behind the computer screen for the lesson and I'll see you there. Okay, welcome behind the screen. So let's get right to it. What is a chord? Well, we very briefly covered this in part one, but in very simple terms, a chord is two or more different notes played at the same time. If you play the same notes in different octaves like this, that's an octave C, that wouldn't really be called a chord. So they must be two different notes. For example, that is a chord. That's a chord. That's a chord. These are all chords because they're two or more different notes played together. So that's really quite simple. Now, it seems easy enough, of course, but the devil is always in the detail and there's a virtually unlimited number of ways of combining two or more notes into sequences. However, the good news is that for one reason or another, over the millennia, we've kind of settled on a few set chords and patterns that sound good. Different cultures use chords and harmony in different ways, of course, but we're dealing with standard Western musical harmony here at the moment. So let's cover the basic chord types first, and that's three note chords called triads. A major triad is a simple chord made up of the root or the home note, C in this case, and the third note and fifth note of the major scale in that key. So, for example, in C major, we've got the root or home note, two, three is E, four, five is G. So it's the root, third, and fifth, the first, third, and fifth notes of the major scale starting on that root. You can go back and catch up and watch the first part of this series for a bit more information on what a key is if you're still not sure of that. So that triad in C major, which has no flats or sharps, is C, E, and G, the first, third, and fifth notes of C major. Another way of working out what the notes are for any major triad is the distance, or interval as we call it in music, between the notes of the chord. From the root to the third, you go up four semitones. So if you look at the mouse here, there's the C, and you're gonna go up, that's counted as number one. So you go one, two, three, four semitones to get to E. So one, two, three, four to E. And then you go up three semitones, to get to the fifth. One, two, three. So to make a major triad, you go up one, two, three, four semitones, and then one, two, three semitones. This method makes it easy to find out the notes of any major triad, no matter how tricky the key, where you may not be immediately sure what the notes of that major scale are. So, for example, if I said, play me an F-sharp major triad, and you don't immediately know what the notes of F-sharp major are, you would just start on F-sharp like this, and then you go up four semitones, one, two, three, four, which gives you A-sharp, and then three, one, two, three, to C-sharp. So the notes of F-sharp major triad are F-sharp, A-sharp, and C-sharp. Boom. For the record, we usually abbreviate the full name of a major triad to just the root name without specifying the major bit. So a C triad is assumed to be a C major triad. If you mean a minor triad, which we're going to cover in a second, you would have to specifically say C minor. So if somebody said it's an E flat chord, that would be an E flat major chord. 
Seeing as the fifth note of any chord is most often not flattened or sharpened, it will be, but that's for later videos, in chord jargon, we refer to the fifth of the triad as just the fifth, not the major fifth. However, as the third of a triad is quite often minor, we have to specify a major or minor third. That's the way we describe chords. It's just the way chord terminology works. So to use the right terminology, we would describe any major triad chord as being root, major third, and fifth. Root, major third, and fifth. So for example, a, a major triad would be A, which is the root, C sharp's a major third, and E is the fifth. In this way, a triad can be in any key, but it's always the root, major third, and fifth within that key. It's a kind of useful code to describe the structure of the chord. Okay, cool. Now, what if we wanted a minor triad? Well, then we need what's called a minor or flattened third in the chord instead of the major third. So the way we do this is instead of going up four semitones from the root to get a major third, we just go up three semitones to get the minor third. So there's our C and then we got one, two, three to E flat gives us the minor third in the key of C. And the fifth stays the same, G. So in order to get from that minor third up to the fifth, we now have to go up one, two, three, four semitones. So the code of a minor triad is to go up three semitones to the minor third and then four semitones to the fifth. By the way, this is a real basics video. We're just doing first things first. There are different triads which aren't major or minor, but we're gonna do that in a more advanced video. So let's learn to walk before we start running. Okay, let's have a quick recap. Different notes played at the same time are called chords. That's a chord. The most common chords used in Western music are based around three note chords called triads, such as that, and that, and that. There are two types of triads, major and minor. A major triad has a root, a major third, and a fifth and a minor triad has a root, a minor third, and a fifth. The code to find out the notes of a major triad is to go up four semitones from the root to the third, and three semitones from there to the fifth. The code for a minor triad is to go three semitones from the root to the minor third, and four semitones from there to the fifth. So major, four, and three, minor, three, and four. And I guess it's worth mentioning at this point that a major triad has got a sort of what you might describe as a happy sound, whereas a minor triad has got what you might describe as more of a sort of sad sound to it. That's all completely oversimplified, but that's the basic sound of a happy major chord and a minor sad chord. So those two simple triads, major and minor triads, actually cover a staggering amount of music already. And you can play a simple version of virtually any song using just major or minor triads, which is pretty damn cool. So let's now cover how you write down or notate, as we say in music, these chords. There's a standardized system of chord symbol notation. I say that, but annoyingly, as we'll see soon enough, it's not quite standardized and there are different methods for describing the same thing, which is immensely annoying. Anyway, to notate a major triad, it's dead simple. You just write the root note name in uppercase, simple. So to write a chord symbol for an A-flat major triad, you just write A-flat, nothing else. Not A-flat madge or A-flat with a capital M or any guff like that, just the note name. So when I play an A-flat triad on the keyboard, the chord symbol will look like this. Simple as that, A-flat, one massively too big chord symbol on the sheet of music. Okay, let's try that again. So for a D major triad, for example, if I play D, F sharp and A, which is the notes of a D triad, then the chord symbol would simply be D. So that means if I'm playing music and I see the letter D as a chord symbol, I know it's a D triad, which is the notes D, F sharp and A like that. Now, to indicate a minor triad, you write the note name of the root plus a small m after the root. So D minor is written as capital D, lowercase m. So if I play D, F and A, which is a D minor triad, then the chord symbol will come up as D and small m. 
Now this is where it starts to get slightly annoying because the alternate chord symbol for a minor is a dash after the root name which looks like that. So major chords are the root name followed by nothing like that and minor chords are the root name followed by a small m like that and the other way of doing that is with a dash. So as I said before, those two basic major and minor triads cover an enormous swathe of music. However, we must also know three more chord types to have the main basics covered. And that involves adding the seventh to those triads. And this is where there's some potential confusion if you don't know what's going on. So let's cover the basic terminology first. As you'd expect, the seventh of a chord just means adding the seventh note of the major scale in that key. The posh name for the seventh note of the scale is the leading note, as it leads back to the root. So, the seven notes of C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, and then the seventh note is B, because it leads back to the root C. So, the seventh of C major is a B. It's really not rocket science, is it? So if you watched part one of this series, you'll know that the last interval of a major scale from the seventh note back to the root is always a semitone. So the quickest and easiest way of working out the leading note or the major seventh of any major scale is just to go one semitone down from the root. So for example, here's a C. And if I want to find out what the seventh note of that major scale is, I just go down a semitone because it's the same as going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for example, what's the seventh note of an A major scale? Well, you find your A and then you go down one semitone and it's a G sharp, simple as that, boom. So that said, let's look at the first of these additional three chord types and that is the major seven chord. This is the easiest one as you just take a major triad as the name implies like this and then you add the seventh note of the major scale on top. In other words, you add the major seventh. The terminology would be root, major third, fifth, major seventh. And in a minute, you'll see why it's important to say major seventh and not just seventh. So what's the code for major seven? That's simple, you just take a major triad and add the major seventh to it, which is the note a semitone beneath the root. So for example, G major seven, there we go, we've got a G, and then it's four semitones to the major third, B, three semitones to the fifth, D, and then we go down a semitone from that G to the F sharp, and that is the major seventh. So the notes of a G major seven are G, B, D, F sharp. And we can do that in any key using that simple formula. Now, the chord symbol for a major seven chord is the root name in capitals and then either the word M, A, J in lowercase, mage, short for major in lowercase, followed by a seven, or you can have a triangle. I like having a triangle. So if I play the notes of C major seven, which is C, E, G, and B like this, the chord symbol that will come up is a triangle and that means C major seven. You can either have the seven after the triangle or if you don't have the seven after the triangle, it still means a C major seven. So just to cover the alternate way of writing major seven, I play my C major seven chord and that comes up as C, M, A, J and then seven. So far so good. So the next chord type I'm gonna give you is called a minor seven or minor seventh. As the name suggests, this chord has a minor triad, but instead of having a major seventh, it has a flattened or minor seventh giving the name. That means that the seventh of the chord is the note two semitones beneath the root note now. So where we were in, say, C before, and we find our major seventh by going down one semitone, now we go down two semitones. So the flattened or minor seven of C B flat, which means that C minor seven would be a C minor triad with a flattened seventh, which is a B flat on top. That's C minor seven. So the terminology would be root, minor third, fifth, and flattened seventh. So for example, to get a D minor seven, we would start with the root D. We go up one, two, three semitones to the F to give us the minor third. One, two, three, four semitones up to give us the A. Now there's the root and we go down one, two semitones to give us the minor seventh of the chord C. So the notes of D minor seven are D, F, A and C. 
Okay, so the chord symbol for minor seventh is the same as the minor triad. It's a small m, except you add a seven to it. So you have the root in capitals, then a lowercase m, followed by a seven. So if I play C minor seven, which is C, E flat, G and B flat, then the chord symbol looks like that. C, small m, and seven. Now the alternative way of writing that is C and then a dash and seven. And often when you have just a dash in a jazz chord sequence, the implication is that it's gonna be a minor seven and not just a minor triad. Now that just leaves the final chord type, which is called a dominant seventh, or a seven for short, which is a mix of the first two. A dominant seventh has a major triad, so in C you'd have your major triad, with a flattened seventh, so the B flat. You would say it has root, major third, fifth, flat seven. So for example, to work out the notes of, let's say, D seven, you would take the root, D, you go up one, two, three, four semitones to get the major third F sharp, one, two, three semitones to get A, and then you go to the root at the top and down two to get the flattened seventh, and that, D, F sharp, A, and C, root, third, fifth, flat seven, is the code of what a dominant seventh, or just a seven chord, as it's abbreviated to, is. Now this is super important to remember, and it's a thing that most people get wrong. Dominant seventh is the posh name for this chord, but it's almost always abbreviated to just seven or seventh, like I just said. So, an E flat dominant seventh would just be called E flat seven. And that is really important distinction to make. So if you want a major seven, you must specify major seven, because if you said E flat seven, you'd get a dominant seventh. The chord symbol for a seventh chord is one of the easiest chord symbols as you just write the number seven. So let's have C7, C, E, G, and B flat. The chord symbol just comes up as the seven. So let's have a recap of all this then. A major seven chord is a major triad with a major seven. And that sounds like that. And the chord symbol is the triangle. A minor seven chord is a minor triad with a flattened or minor seventh. And that looks like the small m with the seven. And finally, a seven chord or a dominant seventh is a major triad with a flattened seventh. Now, the sharpest chisels in the toolbox may be thinking, hang on, there's one missing from this set. What about a minor triad with a major seventh? Well, that is actually a chord type, but you won't find it very often, apart from at the end of the James Bond theme. This chord type is slightly confusingly called a minor major chord. <laughs> and now that you've heard it, you can kind of forget about that for a while. The main thing is to focus on the three chord types we've learned today, which is the major seven chord, the minor seven chord, and the dominant seventh chord. And in the next lesson, we're gonna focus on how all these chords link up. Alrighty, we have covered a lot today and hopefully now, you are a ninja expert on chords and how you notate them and how you find out the notes of each chord. In the next part, part three, we're gonna find out how those chords all link together in functional harmony and how they join up and that's where the magic really starts to happen. That's really cool stuff. So be sure to follow part three next week. In the meantime, go and grab your PDF worksheet by following the link down below. And if you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell to be told when the new videos come out. And I'll see you next time on Get Your Sacks Together. Adios.